Okay, so depending on your math skills, this could be a very easy problem to solve without a calculator. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have 5 to the 6th power minus 5 to the 5th power, all of this divided by 4. All right, this is a multiple choice question. Let's go ahead and take a look at our answers. So A is 1 fourth, B is 5 over 4, E is 25, D is 5 to the 4th power, and E is 5 to the 5th power. All right, so the only rule here is no calculator. But if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the question one more time, because I want to give you a full opportunity to get this right. Now, this is a math multiple choice question, because okay, so i.e. one of these is the correct answer. Now, let's suppose you are a math student. You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't know what to do. Well, listen, just guess, right? You never, ever, ever uh, leave a multiple choice question, okay, a blank on a math test. The only exception is, is if you get penalized for the wrong answer, and that could be the case on some tests like the A's, uh, SAT or ACT. As a matter of fact, I have to kind of review their policies, but there are sometimes we don't, you know, you have to consider whether if you have the wrong, if you guess, that that uh, wrong answer will, uh, you'll actually get penalized uh, uh, for that. But in the uh, vast majority of cases, you don't. So just guess. Maybe you're like, hey, uh, C is my favorite letter. Perfect. Pick C. All right. So let's go to take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer to this problem is E, 5 to the fifth power. Now, remember, we're not using a calculator. So if you got this right, well, that is fantastic. You definitely get a happy face and A+. Plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of working with powers and exponents. But up here, we have to do something that is uh, going to make this problem so, so easy. But obviously, you need to know something about powers and exponents and how to work with them. This is a huge topic in math and especially in algebra. All right, so don't uh, get discouraged if you didn't get this right. But matter of fact, when you see how easy it is to do this problem, a lot of you are going to be like, boy, that was just like way too easy. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so here is our problem. And of course, we know the correct answer now is E, 5 to the 5th. But what we're dealing uh, with here is a math multiple choice question. And you have to be really, really careful with these. Because a lot of students, they'll be like, okay, I know how to do all this work. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this uh, one hour exam in 10 minutes because I got to check my text messages and do my other homework, or whatever the case might be. I've seen this time and time and time again. The worst thing you can do is take a test and hurry up and turn your exam in. Now, why do I bring, that, uh, why do I bring this up is because uh, if you're rushing these questions, right, I'm just going to uh, give you a little bit of um, test taking advice for those of you that are students here and it does apply to this problem and of course we'll get into the solution here in just one second but oftentimes you'll uh, see this problem be like okay i know what to do one two three and uh, you'll pick a choice and you feel good about your answer or what you just did because you recognize your answer you're like oh the answer is one fourth uh, there you go i'm moving on now you think at the end of the test that you're going to get like a 99 percent uh, then you actually get your test back and you get like a C minus a 72% or something like that. And now you're, you know, pretty upset. You're like, hey, what happened? I saw my answers. I was feeling really good. Well, you got to be super careful when it comes to math multiple choice questions because the answer selections, okay, are designed to be the results, right? Of course, with the exception of the correct answer. But uh, the rest of the res um, answers for the most part, if you have a well-designed math test or math question, these answers are going to be the results of common mistakes. <laughs> so you might be like, oh, I see my answer. Well, that's because you actually did this uh, 
in a common, um, you know, incorrect kind of method, if you will, or approach, and you see your results. So, you know, you got to be very careful with math, multiple choice questions, and the only way to really get around this is to know what you're doing. All right, so let's just take, for example, uh, one over four, one fourth. So someone might say, well, let's see, I got five to the six minus five to the fifth, uh, you know, six minus five, maybe this is one, maybe this whole thing is equal to one. So that would be one over four. That looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and select that, right? Or you might say, well, five to the six minus five to the fifth, maybe six minus five is five to the first. So this makes you know pretty good sense. So maybe it's like five to the first over four or five over four. Boy, that even looks better. But these are both wrong. So this is what I'm talking about. So the only way to get a math uh, question correct is to know what you're doing, even on multiple choice exams. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the actual strategy on how to solve this. So what can we do here? Well, remember, in this particular problem, we're not going to be using calculators, right? So we're only going to be using that supercomputer right here between your ears. So you have some options, right? So you might say, well, let's see, uh, I don't I remember how to work with powers and exponents, but I can certainly, you know, calculate out five to the six because, you know, like five squared means five times five or five to the third power five cubed means five times five times five. So you could get your paper and pencil out and be like, well, you know, I'm just going to calculate this out and uh, you subtract these two and then divide by four to get the right answer. So that is one a direct approach. You certainly could take that and you could get the right answer. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and actually do that right now. All right, so we have five to the six minus five to the fifth. We're gonna have to figure out what uh, five to the six power is equal to and five to the fifth power is equal to. So let's go ahead and do that right here. I'm not going to go through the painstaking multiplication, but I'm gonna show you here that someone could do this, right? So like, all right, five to the six is five times five times five times five times five. These are six fives, right? So you could just start, you know, um, say, all right, five times five is 25 times five, you know, and then, or you could do it this way, 25 times 25 times 25. There's a number of different ways you could uh, approach this, but at the end of the day, five times itself, six times, is going to be this number right here, 15,625. All right, so five to the fifth is going to be this number right here, uh, 3125. Now you could get this number first and then multiply this by another five, if you're thinking, either way, uh, you know, we're thinking ahead, you know, to manage the work in this problem, but this is one approach, right? And again, remember, we're not using a calculator. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and take these two values and go back to our problem. Okay, so five to the six, remember, is this number, 15,625, five to the fifth is 3125. So when we subtract these two values, we're going to get the following. Matter of fact, let me kind of scroll down here. So uh, when we uh, take the difference of these two numbers, we get 12,500. Now we're gonna divide by four and we end up with 3125. And you're saying 3125, oh yeah, that's the same thing as five to the fifth. Okay, so five to the fifth is the right answer because remember, this is a multiple choice question and 3125 is not an answer selection. Okay, so you might be saying, oh, I got the right answer. But again, you're gonna have to recognize that answer uh, we're gonna have to recognize that 3125 is the same thing as five to the fifth. So that's even another step. But this is one approach, and this is a good approach, especially for those of you that are just, you know, determined to get the right answer, all right? But there is a easy, easy way to do this problem. And of course, just like I was saying in, in the beginning of this video, it all depends on your math skills, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that super easy way to do this problem right now. But before we do that, let's go ahead and have you do this real quick, and that is to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm definitely not afraid to ask for your help, okay? Now, when it comes to learning math, uh, you have to be comfortable asking for help. You gotta recognize when you're at a point where you're kind of stuck, right? So you cannot just remain stuck, especially if you are a math student and the you know, clock is ticking away you have chapter one, chapter two, you know, uh, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, the course is moving on. If you're stuck at some point or if you're struggling with something, what you can't do, you know, what you can do this, okay, a lot of uh, people do this, but then they really pay a price for it, is to say, 
well, that was not a good chapter. I totally didn't understand that stuff. I hope I never see that again. <laughs> That's not a good strategy to improve in math. So you're like, whoa, boy, I don't like fractions. Uh, hopefully I'll never see fraction problems again. Uh, the, the main idea is this, you know, identify your weak areas and then get, then get help, all right? Start with your teacher if you're a student. And if you're not, you have to consider who you're learning math from and how you're learning math. If you truly want to learn math, learning like math through quick little tutorials is not enough. You really do need full math instruction if you uh, truly want to comprehend and master the material. All right now, if you're interested, uh, you can check out my full main math courses. I'll leave links to all those in the description of this video. Kind of what we're talking about here is kind of like pre-algebra, algebra stuff. And for those of you that are not math students, you can check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. But uh, anyways, I'm going to just go ahead and wrap this up by saying when you subscribe, it helps me find other people that I can help in math. So it's a big deal. And uh, this is why I interrupt these videos so I can kind of promote, you know, my channel so I can help as many people as possible. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of time to tell you why I do the things I do. All right. So let's get back to this problem. So we have 5 to the 6 minus 5 to the 5th over 4. Now, when I show you the solution, how easy this is, a lot of you are going to be like, Mr. Utah Math Man, uh, you know, you should just did this right from the beginning. Well, I wanted to show you the hard way and then the easy way. And if you have the math skills, then this is like a super, super easy problem to do, again, without the aid of a calculator. All right, now, what we need to do up in the numerator is factor, all right? And hopefully... Uh, some of you identified that we do have a greatest common factor. I got the work right here, but let me give you a kind of a, a simpler example. If I had, let's say, 10 minus 4 over 4, okay, I could factor out a greatest common factor. And of course, 10 minus 4 is 6, but we could factor out if we were so inclined a what? Well, what's common between these two? A 2. So 2 times 5 minus 2 is uh, 2 is the greatest common factor, right, of the numerator, these two numbers. So because 2 times 5 is 10, and 2 times 2 is 4. So here, we're dealing with powers, and we need to be thinking about factoring, greatest common factor. And the only way you're going to be kind of, you know, aware of this is if you have strong, you know, um, uh, math skills when it comes to powers and exponents. So let's go ahead and take a look at this right now. So the greatest common factor here is 5 to the 5th. Okay, 5 to the 5th. Now, the GCF is the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. So 5 uh, to the 6th power is the same thing as 5 to the 5th times 5 to the 1st. Okay, so if I said, hey, multiply 5 to the 5th times 5 to the 1st, how do we multiply uh, powers with the bases being the same, right? So here, uh, 5 to the second power, this is the base, this is the exponent. So you can multiply powers when the bases are the same. All we have to do is simply add the exponent. So 5 to the fifth times 5 to the first is equal to 5 to the sixth. And here we have 5 to the fifth. And of course, this is a difference. And uh, do these two numbers have a common factor? Of course they do. It's 5 to the fifth. So we can factor out a 5 to the fifth, and that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, so 5 to the fifth, a parentheses, 5 minus 1, because 5 to the fifth times 5, or 5 to the first, is 5 to the sixth, right? I just showed you that right there. And then 5 to the fifth times 1 is simply 5 to the fifth. Now, look how easy this problem is going to be. All right, so if I factor out the GCF, I could be like, wait a minute here, I got 5 minus 1. Interesting, this could uh, maybe be 4. And let's go to finish this problem up. So 5 minus 1 is indeed 4. And now I have a factor. I have 5 to the 5th times 4 in the numerator. And I have a 4 down here. I can simply cross cancel these 4s. And yay, I'm done. Uh, I have the right answer, 5 to the 5th. Now, another little tip for uh, those of you that still have to take math tests in your life. When you have a uh, multiple choice question okay, on an exam, okay, for the most part, uh, these questions are going to be designed to be uh, kind of answered in a reasonable period of time. All right, so if you're taking an exam, you're like, oh, I know how to solve this, but it's going to take me 10 minutes. Well, you're probably thinking 
uh, you know, you're going down the wrong path. You're thinking about the wrong strategy. And it's very easy. You could do it, okay? But you've got to be very careful with your time. And sometimes you do have to use the only way you know to answer a question, but you're going to have to hurry up on other questions. So, you know, well, again, it's a test taking. You really have to think about time management. But anyways, it all comes down to math skills. How much math do you know? The more you know, the better off you're going to be on any exam. And uh, hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.